For hundreds of years, the false interpretation of Daniel 2, Daniel 7, and Daniel 8 has deluded people and deceived them and kept them in the dark. And here you can see the truth of what it is all about. Now the king asked Daniel, can you explain the dream that I had? Daniel said, I am no wiser than any other man, but there is a God in heaven that can explain what your dream is about. In verse 34 and 35, this is what he said. As you watched the stone was hewn without human hands and struck the image statue on its feet of iron and earth and way, some Bibles call it clay, and crumbled them. Then they all crumbled together, the iron, the earthenware, copper, some Bibles call it brass, the silver and the gold. They became like chaff from the summer threshing floor, and the wind carried them away, and no trace was found of them. And the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the entire earth. You've got to ask the question, how does the stone become a mountain and fill the earth? This represents Yahweh, the living, creating God's religion. It's over 30 years ago that I was fascinated with the Daniel prophecies and I accepted the traditional understanding that all of the churches and the Jews had been teaching. However, when I realized that it was wrong, it was an error that I was teaching, and that's because of the verses that I've just read to you, and verse 28, I stopped showing people the Daniel prophecies. And I looked at it all again, and I realized where the whole of Christendom, the whole of the Jews, were teaching false interpretations in error. Now I just have a couple of annotations to add to this before we go into the chart and show you the prophecy. I want you to realize that the original source for Daniel prophecy interpretations as traditional understanding for the whole world came out of books that were published by Darby and Brown and Westcott and Hood back in the 1700s. This message is to the new chosen Israel that will be chosen by Yahweh, the living creator God. It will be that anyone who calls in the name of Yahweh will escape for on the mountain of Zion and in Jerusalem there will be refuge, as Yahweh said, and among the survivors whom Yahweh summons. You'll get that in Joel 3, 5 and 4, 17. Thus you will know that I am Yahweh your God who dwells in Zion, my holy mountain. And it is the holy mountain in this prophecy represented by a stone that hits and destroys the image. Okay, let's have a look at this chart together. On the left-hand side, you can see a representation of the statue or the image that King Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. And he wanted an understanding of what it is all about and Daniel proceeded to tell him and some of those words I've already given to you. But let's go and look here in this statue. You'll see the head of the gold, then there's a chest of silver, then brass or copper, and then you've got the iron and clay or iron and earthenware mix. There's the five sections of the statue that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. Now I've put up there Verse 28, it says in verse 28, what will be in the last days. And that's, I've called item seven on this chart. Let's go back up to items one, two, three, and four, and you'll see that we're referring to religious systems. We're talking about religion and culture. It's not about Nebuchadnezzar or the Babylon kingdom being uh, tossed out by uh, Medo-Persia, who was tossed out by Alexander the Great, and so on. It is not about kingdoms, one kingdom being defeated by another kingdom, 
being defeated by another kingdom. This is not what that statue is all about. It is about religious systems. Why do I say that? Because simply, how do they all get destroyed in one event? When we're looking at 600 years of one kingdom taking over another kingdom, taking over another kingdom. How could they all be destroyed in one event when they cover 600 years? All right. Now, we, we're looking at the religious and the culture and the systems of all of these sections of the, of the world over 600 years. Up the top, it does say that it was Babylon and silver is Medo-Persia, and the copper or brass is Greece, and then you've got Rome, and then you've got the iron and clay, or iron and earthenware mix. The reason why you've got iron and earthenware mix is because iron does not mix with clay. Clay does not mix with iron. So the feet of iron and clay are representing a cultural system in the world that comes about, as I put there, the New World Order, some are strong, some are weak, but they do not mix. Now go back up to item one with me. In the Babylon section, you had the Babylonian and the Assyrian counterfeit mythology, the Sumer, Mesopotamian sun worship, Baal, and that influenced the Hebrews, the Chaldeans and Canaan. Let's go to item two. In Medo-Persia, you had Sin, which was the uh, Arab god. Sin is the moon god of Islam. Zoroastrianism, that's ancient Iran. Sun worship, a Syro and Babylonian system. Coming down to item three, Greece, you've got the mystery system, ancient Near East mythology and e Egyptian, Amun Ra, Osiris, and Isis. I've given you several reports on this. And you come to the Rome, iron, item four. Jesus, I've already explained to you, is a carryover from Horus and Isis and Elohim, Lord, which, inter which was inserted into the Bibles and they wiped out Yahweh's name 7,000 times. And you've got plenty of reports on that from me. So we're talking about the sun gods, and we're talking about Adon or Adonai. And of course, the Jews won't mention the name Yahweh, they mention Hashem. All of this is going to be completely and totally destroyed. Now, when we look at item seven, item seven, go up on the top right hand time, Yahweh decreed to destroy all the idol gods. That's items one to six. And he said, their names will never be remembered. And the stone that smashes and destroys a lot in one event also is shown up in Isaiah 57, 13 to 14. Now, as I've already shown you, in verse 28, it, it was told to Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the last days. So all of this destruction of all of these systems, which is religious culture and systems, are going to be destroyed in the last days. Now, Yahweh is referred to in the old book as Redeemer, and he is the Savior. I don't know how many times it tells you that. And Yahweh destroys all of the idol gods in one event which we've read in the beginning of this report, verses 34 to 36. And of course, we read also that the stone that was hewn out, but not by human hands, it becomes a great mountain and fills the entire earth. So there we have the stone representing Yahweh, the living creator, God's religion and culture, and the kingdom of God, kingdom of Yahweh, being now settled in with all of the new new uh, people that have been chosen to be the new chosen Israel. And of course, you've got a report from me where the new chosen Israel people 
will will not be liars and cheats, murderers. They will be honest people, true people. They will not be hypocrite people, and they will be kind, and they will be keeping Yahweh's laws. That represents Yahweh's religion and Yahweh's kingdom that comes in there in item seven. So there is the proper understanding of Daniel chapter two, showing you the symbols, showing you the statue, and showing you what will happen. In item seven, or item six down the bottom, you've got you, the new world order, and you've got four world unions that are coming into bearing. Right now, we already have the uh, EU, European, and then we're going to have the North American Union, which will take in Canada and Mexico. And of course, we've already got ready to go the South African or African Union, and we will have the Asian Union, of which this country will be part of. So these unions that the New World Order or the ruling elite, that's the Masons and the Illuminati, have been trying to work on for the last hundred years, they are not going to be very good together because some are weak and some are strong. And that's why the feet of clay representing them is partly iron and partly clay or partly earthenware because they will not mix. Already we are looking at some of the people of these unions breaking away from the IMF or the global bankers because they're not happy with the uh, system. So there is in front of your eyes on the screen the understanding of Daniel chapter 2 a complete understanding of about the uh, religions and the culture that's going to be destroyed by Yahweh, the living creator God, who ushers in his culture, his kingdom, his religion.